I think this is where we go wrong. This is why I think we're getting it wrong, because we generally tend to to judge whether or not someone is a wolf in sheep's clothing by, again, the, the fruit of what they're producing outwardly. So we judge them by their doctrine. We judge them by their teaching and different things of that sort. I don't think that's what Jesus is getting at here. And particularly because he says inwardly, they are ravenous wolves. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in to the church dropout. Another edition of it is what it is. Uh, if you have not already, please like and subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. And as usual, drop a comment below. Keep the conversation moving forward. Um, and let me say this, you know, for the algorithm, it really helps when you guys comment, um, even if it's, you know, just a matter of uh, confirmation. Um, and also when you hit the like button, it helps smaller channels that are not necessarily chasing the algorithm helps us to reach more people. So I appreciate your interaction up to this point, but also want to encourage those of you, uh, who are not just to, you know, uh, give a thumbs up and uh, comment and yeah, I really would appreciate it. So I was on a walk with my son, he's eight and he asks the most peculiar questions. And um, or he just I, I don't want to say peculiar. I guess he asks questions that are just usually out of the blue. Like it's like, man, where did that come from? And it's sort of a blessing, right? Because I think he feels like I know everything, you know, to some degree, like I should know these things. And, you know, but, you know, I, I just tell him flat out, like, you know, boy, I don't know what you're talking about. But um, but I was on a walk with him the other day and he turns and he looks at this tree. And he asks me, he goes. What kind of tree is that? Like, I don't know. It's just a random tree. OK. Um, and we live in a neighborhood that has a lot of trees. It's an established neighborhood. So it has a lot of trees. And he's just like, so this is not just like your oak tree that's just sitting up. This is one of thousands of trees we've passed up on our walk. And, and he's confidently asking me, like, what type of tree is that? And I don't know what type of tree that is. And, um, and I tell him, you know, Hey, I don't know what, what, what type of tree that is. And it just dawned on me. I started to think about Matthew seven, where Jesus is talking about the wolf in sheep's clothing and, and how we know their fruit, you know, and, and the only way that I can know what type of tree my son was pointing at is really to see what type of fruit it bears, right? I can, you know, definitely go look it up online. Now there's apps. You can just put your camera on the tree and it'll tell you that this is a blank, blank, blank tree. But traditionally you'd have to wait until it's the bearing season to be able to determine that, right? Uh, what type of leaves does it bear? If it bears fruit, right? There's really no way to understand what that tree is, uh, until, you know, we really see what type of fruit it bears. Right. And it got me thinking of Matthew seven and how we use this terminology of wolf and sheep's clothing. And I really just started to think about, like, have we got this wrong? Are we misapplying this, this to the wrong people? Right. Because the context that we generally um, use, you know, the wolf in sheep's clothing is tied to, you know, false teachers, you know, false teachers, right? Like individuals who are teaching a false prophet will say that they're a wolf in sheep's clothing. But I'm not sure that that apply that they're the ones that this passage is is um, is speaking of. Right. I mean, just think about it. Like when you talk about a false teacher, they are teaching something uh, what they're teaching is evidence of the fruit it's readily available you can you can look at their teaching or listen to their teaching and you can weigh that against scripture and you can readily see that it's not it's not in line with 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 true teaching right so the fruit is readily available right their intentions and then also here's the big thing their intentions uh can be judged by that teaching right so you can tell right away at least in terms of a person's teaching whether or not they are a sheep 
or a wolf, if we're going to you know, continue with that analogy, right? I think what Jesus is talking about is something that's a little different. I think Jesus is talking about a different type of um, situation, right? So on the other hand, right, Jesus, this analogy or metaphor that Jesus is using suggests something different than I think that does, right? I think this analogy of wolf and sheep's clothing, um, you know, is really pointing out, right, an individual that actually looks like a sheep, right? Um, looks exactly like a sheep, w- w- which would mean that their intentions are unseen and and hidden. We can't tell. We can't tell they're a wolf. This is why in that passage it says inwardly they're ravenous wolves. Like we can't tell from the outside they look like a sheep. You know, so it can't necessarily be someone who's exposing that uh, by their teaching. This, I think, more or less deals with, you know, someone deals with someone who I guess we would be we would not be able to see even by inspecting you understand what i'm saying so so i guess what i'm saying is that i think the person that jesus is talking about in this passage we we it would be difficult to be a fruit inspector because everything about them looks like a sheep right because we can't discern the heart we can't discern what's on the inside but everything on the outside looks like a sheep so no matter how hard we look We can't see it. Right. So no matter how hard I look at that tree without seeing its fruit. I can't determine what type of tree that is. It's a tree. The only thing that's going to determine that tree is different from that tree is the type of fruit that that tree is bearing. Right. And the problem with that is, is that I have to wait until that tree bears its fruit. It's not something that's readily available. It's not something that's discernible right now. And that's why I'm saying, like, have we got this wrong? Right. I think this is a special category (laughs) for those who are who speak. Who are speaking or claiming to speak rightly on behalf of God. Right. This is why he said, beware of false prophets. Right. You know, a prophet in this sense is not generally someone who's forth telling. But it's someone that is speaking God's truth. Right. And and they're they're claiming to speak on behalf of God. Right. Um, and this flows with the that section, because the next section, he talks about false disciples. Right. So this appears to be someone who is speaking on behalf of God. Right. So they look like a sheep. So, so let, let me break it down further. They could be saying the right things. They are saying the right things. They're speaking on behalf of God. They're sp- they're saying true things. Right. That's why I'm saying like it's not a false a false teacher's fruit is readily available. But a sheep in wolf's clothing, it doesn't look like or a wolf in sheep's clothing. It doesn't look like a wolf. You can't tell it's a wolf. And the only way to tell if they're a wolf is by the fruit that that is is uh, is it bared? Or boar? I don't know. We can only tell by the fruit. Right? And so so this is a special category. I think he's talking about individuals who who may be saying the right things, but inwardly not agreeing with them, not living them, not doing them. Right? And you can't tell that. Right. You can't tell their intentions, their motives. You can't tell that. Now, the difficult part with this is that. In this case, because they look like a sheep and they're operating like a sheep, they're in the pen with other sheep. They're doing sheep things. The only way to inspect that fruit is. Through time. It's only time will tell. Right. And that's why it's important in this sense to understand the only way that I could tell what that tree looks like that my son is pointing to is in its time 
of bearing fruit. That's what distinguishes it. Right. It's like, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not I don't even know what that would be called. But anyway, I, I don't study plants, trees, stuff like that. But, you know, let's just take an apple tree. And, and I could be wrong on this. I'm just, you know, just just hey, just roll with me. Roll with me. So. Let's just take an apple tree and I'm assuming uh, an apple, tr all apple trees look the same. So whether it's green apples or red apples, the, the tree looks the same. The only way that I know what type of tree, what type of fruit, whether it's red or green, is when it actually starts to bear fruit or else it just looks like a tree to me. It looks like an apple tree. Oh, that's an apple tree. Right. Until it starts bearing fruit, then I can say, OK, that one's bearing red apples. That one's bearing green apples. And I think this is what's happening here is that here we have an individual who is claiming for all intents and purposes to be a child of God. In our terminology today, not then, but now Christian. And. They're bearing that that name. And we can't tell whether or not they're truly Christian or not until they bear fruit. And the unfortunate part is, is it takes time for that fruit to bear. Because it only bears in season. When that season is for that individual, we don't know. We don't know. So if it takes time for us to tell what type of fruit, because we have to wait until they bear fruit, Eventually, the passage is saying what's in you comes out of you because practically a wolf can't hang around sheep long without getting hungry. <laughs> right. I mean, just practically. Right. A sheep, a wolf can't hang around in a sheep pen and at some point not get hungry. Eventually, he's going to want to devour something. You know, he's going to want lamb chops. OK, and so. Eventually, fruit will come forth. In other words, what's in you will come out of you. Right. OK. Um, and so, so so let me say this. What type of fruit are we what type of fruit is Jesus talking about here? And I think this is relevant to this to this discussion, because Jesus says, you know, you will know them by their fruit. And I think it's interesting because when we talk about this passage, we always talk about the fruit of we're, we always talk about like the fruit of a person's ministry. And I don't think Jesus is talking about the fruit of a person's ministry, like the fruit that they're bearing uh, in what they're doing. Right. So here's a person who's speaking on behalf of God and they're bearing fruit in the people in the lives of the people that they're actually talking to. Right. That's not the fruit that I think Jesus is talking about. That's like not the fruit that I think is happening here uh, of whether, you know, to determine whether or not a person is a false prophet. And I think this is where we go wrong. This is why I think we're getting it wrong, because we generally tend to to judge whether or not someone is a wolf in sheep's clothing by, again, the, the fruit of what they're producing outwardly. So we judge them by their doctrine. We judge them by their teaching and different things of that sort. I don't think that's what Jesus is getting at here. And particularly because he says inwardly, they are ravenous wolves. So whatever the fruit is has to be related to who they are inwardly. So I don't think he's talking about the fruit on the outside. I don't even think he's talking about the fruit that a, of a person's faithfulness in life. Like, I don't I don't think he's talking about good works here. Like, oh, you know, they're 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 they, they're praying they're they're doing you know, like I don't think he's talking about that. Right. Because because a, a wolf in sheep's clothing is 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 deceptive. They're doing sheep things. They're doing sheep things. So I don't even think he's talking about like just fruit of everyday life. You know what I mean? Like, you know, man, this person, you know, man, they're they're faithful. They help others. They love, you know, they're like, like, you know, they give they like all of those things that we would, you know, consider to be fruit or or evidence of a person's salvation. Um, I, I don't think that's what he's talking about here. What Jesus is talking about here is internal fruit. Their intentions, their motives, their desires, what's going on inwardly. They're they're inwardly, they're ravenous wolves. Inwardly, their motives are not correct. 
right? In the end, they prove to be more for themselves and they seek to destroy the fold and feed their appetite. And the reason why this one is so scary, I guess, is because we can't tell. It's only when the fruit of that inward ravaging of wolves shows itself on the outside because a sheep can't be, I mean, because a wolf can't be in the pen with sheep without wanting to get, without wanting to eat. Whatever it is that's inside of them has to come out. So whether it's money, whether it's power, whether it's sexual exploit, whatever it is that's driving their motives, at some point it will come out. But the problem is, is we can't see it. We can't see it. And and that's why I think we're getting this wrong, because, see, we 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 tend to categorize individuals who are teaching a false gospel as being wolves in sheep's clothing. But 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 the reality is, is that that's discernible by what they're teaching in this passage. I think what Jesus is talking about is not discernible. We have to watch the fruit and that fruit can take place over time. It's 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 how do I say this? I'm not trying to be insensitive here. Because I had this conversation with a friend of mine, like, I'm not trying to be insensitive here. But I think as Christians, we tend to go for the low hanging fruit. You know what I mean? Especially when it comes to, you know, what we do online, like we're cherry picking the low hanging fruit, right? Like, it's easy to call out a false prophet when what they're teaching is false. That's that's easy. But when we've been deceived by someone who we believe is a prophet when they turn out to be false because what was on the inside ended up coming out and the fruit shown them to be a ravenous wolf. We have a hard time with that. And we even have a hard time, you know, saying they were a wolf. Right? And that's why I'm saying I think we're getting this wrong. I think we're getting this wrong. You know, um, I don't know if in today's Christianity that we have a category for this. We don't have a category for the individual who is sheeping. And I'm talking about sheeping well. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like sheeping better than you, but yet internally is far from God. And again, this fits with the context because next he gets into false disciples. Have we not done this in your name? Have we not done this in your name? And then he's like, you never knew me. They looked like one thing, but they weren't another. And what Jesus is saying here, the only way to tell who's a false prophet is to look at their fruit. And that fruit takes time. But eventually that fruit will bear itself. Eventually that fruit will come to light. A wolf can't be around sheep without getting hungry at some point the inwardly ravenous wolf will come out it will come to the light right now here's the last thing i'll say and again i'm just working all of this out these are just some notes and some things that i just typed up today and i'm just working this out but once their intentions have come to light right how do we know whether whether they're a sheep or a wolf right i mean could it be that someone has lived a certain way inwardly and it's come out that they are not who they say that they are. How do we know they are a sheep or a wolf? How do we know? How do we know that they're just a sheep who's gone wild (laughs) or they are a actual wolf? How do we know? How do we know? I would say this. I would say we know by the fruit of repentance, the fruit of repentance. Now, I'm saying that intentionally, the fruit of repentance. OK, what has repentance? Here we go again. Bore, bear. I don't know what fruit has been uh, uh, bore, bared. I don't know. Um, I'm not the English major. Right. But 
What fruit has been bore as a result of that repentance? Anybody could say anything. A person could say anything. But it's what they do. That's the fruit of repentance. How has that repentance affected the rest of their life? Here are a few questions, right? Are they operating in the same spirit as before? If somebody, if somebody's intentions and, you know, if, if, if what was inward came out and their intentions have been brought to light, are they operating in the same spirit as before? Right. Did they learn anything? Like, are they operating in the same spirit? Are they doing the same things? Has not anything changed? They took time, but they haven't changed. Right. Did they learn anything from this experience? Not just about. Uh, sin, but also about themselves in terms of like, man, should I be actually doing this? Another question is, is are they manifesting similar behavior? Are you noticing the same things that were in them before? Are they in them now? If if there was, you know, certain because, you know, hindsight is always 20, 20, right? Like you can always look back and see like, OK, the signs were there. Hindsight is 20, 20. So, so you, you know, you know, um, for some of us, hindsight is 2010 because you just don't have good vision. <laughs> is 2010 good? I don't know. But anyway, um, you know, hindsight is clear vision. You know what I mean? Hindsight is super HD. OK, it, you know, not 1080p, you know, not 480p, whatever. Right. I, di I digress. Um, so let me get back to it. But are they manifesting similar behavior? What we saw in them before, do we see that in them now? Right. And here's the last question. Are they attracted to the same things? It's a red flag to me when someone who. Who's whose deeds have been exposed to be of ill intent or just their deeds have, have been exposed. It's a red flag to me if they're trying to get back to the same space, to the same place. It's a red flag. Are they attracted to the same things? Are they trying to do the same things that they did before? Are they trying to have influence like they had influence before? Are they trying to get the same stage that they had before? That's a red flag. Because it also shows that they may not be operating in wisdom. They may not have actually bore any fruit of repentance. And I'm not saying, listen, I'm not saying that they're not repentant. Right. I think these are some ways that we can tell. Right. Um, you know, or one one way we can tell that, you know. If a person is actually a wolf or a sheep is is by the fruit of their repentance. And here's what I'll say, just like it took time for for that to be revealed. It also takes time for that to be restored. Right. And again, if somebody's not willing to take that time and be restored. Probably a wolf. Probably a wolf. The key identifiers of a wolf is, is that it's about them. A wolf is is only concerned with its own appetite. Right. And so anyway, just some thoughts. Are we getting this wrong? Right. Have we reserved this category for the obvious bad fruit? Are we asking the right questions about wolf and sheep's clothing? Right. But anyway just a thought i would love to hear your thoughts on this if you have not already please like rate subscribe and as usual drop a comment below keep the conversation moving forward would love to hear your thoughts on this that's it thank you for tuning in god bless